Hey guys, Bradley Washer here, and I just wanted to share a really powerful tip that any artist can use to improve the quality of the renders in their portfolio, be it for the game industry or graphic design or anywhere else. So this might seem very simple, but the number of students and other people I've worked with or talked with, you'd be very surprised if you go and you look at the renders that they have in their website. If you check for this, how often this is not the case. So what we're gonna do is show a quick example. I'm gonna open up Photoshop here real fast. And I have a render of a grenade that I did about a year ago. And I want you guys to take a look at it and try to think about this critically as an artist and ask yourself, am I doing everything possible here in terms of color, light, form, contrast, etc., that will make this image the most attractive to the human eye that I can? If you said, no, you're probably right. There's a ton of things we can improve, but we're going to focus on one thing specifically. I see a lot in renders that I think a lot of people can learn from. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to image adjustments levels. And there's something I want you to notice. So right away off the bat, you may have noticed this already. If we look at our histogram here of our levels, so we're thinking this little arrow right here, when we're in Photoshop, if you didn't know, this is the purest black you could ever have, okay, ever on the computer screen. And up here, this is the purest white that we could ever have in a render. And I've manipulated this in such a way to make it a little bit worse for example sake. So what you'll notice is, you'll notice this gap of information. So we have all these little black lines, which means the number of pixels in that range value Okay, that's all that means. But you'll notice here, we kind of have a little dot and then it stops. There's a blank gap here to the last kind of ability to tweak it. So it's as simple as making sure you open your renders, taking this and sliding it so that our brightest white equals the brightest pixel in our render. And then also taking our darkest value possible and aligning it with the darkest value possible in our render. And here, if I toggle preview, you can see how much of a dramatic difference we've made by just adjusting the levels of our final render slightly. And I can even move the middle tone here to get a little more range. And ultimately, we like this as human beings because we love contrast. Human beings are great at contrast. It helps us see form and animals in the wild when we're hunting and gathering, all that great stuff. That aside, this is something I want you guys to check on your portfolio renders and make sure that you're using the full range and also that you're not clamped out on your range. So again, if we can think of this as the ultimate darkest black we could ever have, and these are each individual pixels mapped out to so the number of them in that value range. If I pull this up to here, so what has happened to our render? Well, what's happened is all of these values are now considered, because they're on this side of this little black marker, to be 100% black. So you imagine taking all of these values, putting them up to the top, and saying they're pure, pure black. And we can see that here. This is what's happening. The same thing can happen with your renders on the white side. So if we pulled this in and cranked it up, you'll see now all of these values are considered 100% white. So we never, ever, never really want our render to be clamped or pulled up. We always want a nice balance that uses the full range evenly and consistently. Now, some of you might have a concern and say, well, these are game renders and I shouldn't manipulate them in any way. And that's pretty true. We definitely would never want to come into our renders and paint in extra information or get rid of errors. Usually though, in my experience, changing the levels or slightly tweaking the color or sharpening your final image is acceptable in your portfolio. What you can do is look up a concept called a LUT or a lookup table. If you're making renders specifically out of a game engine like Unreal or Unity, and what that allows you to do is adjust some of your color contrast information directly in the engine. So if you feel like this is kind of cheating, you can always do that in your render of choice beforehand. So just to give you a, another option for what you could do if you didn't really want to do this or you felt like this was manipulative in some way to the end user that was going to view it. Okay guys, well that wraps up this video quick tip. Hopefully you found something interesting and found something useful that you're going to be able to put into practice in your art portfolio. 
ultimately giving you more opportunities to create better art and improve overall. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I plan on making a lot more videos, tutorials, courses, quick tips, things like that to help in the game career industry and game art development process. So again, I thank you guys. You're awesome. And I'll talk to you guys soon.